Hello. I'm so glad that you are here for seven minute seed. It is something the Lord has put on my heart for a while, and it's just a joy to me to be here with you to do it. I am Pastor Kate from RootBible.com. If you're unfamiliar with RootBible.com, I encourage you to check it out. It's a free resource for families to register on and join current semesters that we're in and learn things for free. And then I come out here in 7 Minute Seeds and talk to you about those biblical principles we're sharpening, strengthening, and growing in in a short amount of time so you can make them real all week long at home. We're currently in a series called The Real You, and that's what we'll be talking about today. You know, you've only missed one class. There's still more classes this week. So if you register at rootbible.com for free, your preschooler, your elementary, your junior high, your high schooler, and any adult in your home can access any of those live interactive class times for free. So I would encourage you to check it out. Again, that's the real you at rootbible.com. Now, we're going to get seven minutes on the clock. Um, how many of you have ever struggled with seeing something different in the mirror than other people see or know somebody that sees it different? Um, when you look at yourself, you see every blemish, you've focused on it for your entire existence on the earth, you see every issue, you see every problem, but it's not necessarily what other people see. Or I remember I would know girls in high school and they would be like, I am so fat. And they were like a size negative two, you know, but in their mind's eye um, with the trickery and the twisting thinking, they considered themselves overweight. I, I had been there before. It's just this image like we liken it to a carnival mirror. You have not changed, but your reflection that you see, you recognize as real. Right? So a bendy, a wide, a silly, um, you're now understanding as real. So this is a major dividing line for God working in our lives because he wants us to see ourselves the way that he sees us, which is in a totally different and new way. Do you know how he sees us? Well, he sees us in Christ. I'm going to prove that to you right now. So we are talking about the main question as in your home and with our kids and with those that are taking the classes this week, even in our reboot course, is, um, is there something that we think about ourselves that is not true? Okay, there can be some seeming realities that are not true in the light of big T truth, which is God and his promises, or Jesus, which is the word of God, the one truth that is never to fail, never to return void in our lives. The same goes for our kids. The word of God will never return void in their life. The same goes for our spouse and for us. And so when we start to address seeing ourselves in an incorrect light and it being exposed by the word, we know how to combat it. Does that make sense? So if there is something that we believe that is not true, what will expose it or the mirror that will expose it is the word of God. How do we do this in our home? That means anywhere from um, I fight between siblings and you're so mean. Okay, let's let's um, divide the person from the action and who they really are in court in Christ and according to the Word of God. Uh, let's let's divide their action from who they are. Right, we're not going to label a person apart from knowing that they are in Christ, even though they've done something that isn't characteristic of being in Christ, their true nature is still in Christ. So just because a feeling rises up, an emotion, um, uh, a certain outlook and understanding, if it doesn't align with who you are in Christ or who they are in Christ, 
then guess what? It's not true, which totally exposes all of the nonsense going on, like your truth, my truth, their truth. That's nonsense. That is just simply an inaccurate view of themselves that they're perpetuating as their truth because the word of God pierces the heart and even brings offense to people that don't want to be surrendered in Christ, who don't want to be changed by him, who don't want to be sharpened and stretched and strengthened and don't want to lay down what we call the carnal nature, well, what the Bible calls the carnal nature to live a life of Christ. So when we're in our home and somebody is using, you know, words about themselves or others, which is like, I'm not good enough, I can't do this, or, you know, let's take it into the faith realm. Um... This is big in the church today that like you have to go to someone in the pulpit to walk in healing. And you see Christ bring healing to the earth, but then you see his people given the Holy Spirit that he had, which is why he could anoint the disciples to bring healing. But then he sent the Holy Spirit to all of us, who is the power behind the promise, which is the word of God and the finished work that Christ did on the cross, which means when I get saved, I, although I can grow it, I have the same amount of faith as you do and the same access to that faith. And understanding that allows me to know that I can stand in healing. Now, please understand, you can also ask, I can scratch my back. But if there's a spot I can't quite reach and I'm coming up short, I can ask, hey, can you scratch that real quick? So listen, healing is yours. It's not something you've done. It's not um, you're not good enough or you need to grow more. No, healing is yours. But it is good to know someone that also knows it's yours and might need to scratch a part of your back you know, you can't quite get to. And that means not a prayer chain. That's not people talking in fear or the worldly compassion. That means people that stand with you. Okay, why do I say that? Because this is how we operate even in our family when it comes to um, anything the word says, prosperity, wisdom, healing. My kids, because they've given their life to the Lord and received Christ and choose to be made new in him, which... <laughs> My computer is frozen. I can't even go to the scriptures. Yay. Um, but there is in Corinthians a scripture that says your life is now hidden in Christ. And this is the main point we'll pick up on in the next episode, which is if their life is hidden in Christ, I trust the word of God. My life is hidden in Christ. Where will I find my true identity despite what I feel, despite what I'm experiencing, or despite what people have said? I will only find it in Christ. It is hidden there. And because it's hidden, that means I'm going to have to go looking for it. That way it's a treasure to me and I know the value of it. That means my feelings and just wanting to live off the cuff by my flesh or my carnal nature the way the world does is of less interest to me than valuing uh, my life in Christ, which I treasure and I know is hidden for me to discover. We can talk that way at home. We can have that faith with our kids. We can guide them and encourage them in that very real truth that the same faith that I received when I gave my life to Christ, you have. And your ability to mature is based in your ability to, to discover that hidden treasure in Christ, um, not in your age and earthly years. And so I'm going to constantly be pulling that identity out of them uh, from the word and, and helping them find it and see it, that, that their life is hidden in him alone. So their, their emotions, their feelings, their ideas of their future, their understanding of their spouse, all of that is hidden in Christ. And, and through the Holy Spirit, they will be led in all knowledge, truth, and wisdom if they want it to have that life lived out just as he intended and planned for them. That is so exciting. That is the real you. And that is what we are teaching on all this month in Root. Again, check it out at rootbible.com. We would love you to check it out. This is to reach families in their homes uh, between Sundays. This is to 
anchor roots in Christ alone, that their systems may be rebooted. This is about getting his body back to the basics and out of churchianity. That doesn't mean stop going to church. Stop thinking that because you attend a church, you're walking in the fullness of Christ, right? You wouldn't ever say that. No one's ever said that to you. But that mindset has bled in over time to so many people. And we just want to help you step out of it because you have everything that you need in Christ Jesus. Jesus already available inside of you. Your kids, if they've received Christ Jesus, have it. And we always want to help you uh, cultivate that seed by giving you more seed, which is the word of God, and how then to water and harvest it. Okay, thank you for joining me for 7-Minute Seed. I will see you next time. And until then, may you and your family be abundantly blessed.